Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to draw a portrait. That's Abraham Lincoln. All right, uh, first things first, I gotta figure out uh, where to place the head over here. And so I need to figure out the, uh, kind of like where the top of the head and the bottom of the head fall. Now, as time goes on, you get more comfortable, you'll be able to do this freehand and just eyeball it. But a little uh, training wheels type way of doing it is using a ruler. So you will just measure. So I will just make a mark where my measurements were. So now I got the top of the head and the bottom of the head. All right, so I measured out all of uh, where my features are gonna fall. I got where the you know the hairline, uh, top of the eyebrows, bottom of the eyes, the nose, mouth, uh, chin, beard, all that good stuff. Also got the width. A little tip is to notice that eyes are kind of think of eyes sitting on a rail uh, with each other, and notice if it's ever on a tilt. Like this has a very slight tilt, so I've made sure to start indicating that with these uh, plumb lines that I'm drawing here. So at this point, I'm just gonna be seeing shapes. I'm gonna be seeing shapes and comparing shapes. I'm, I'm seeing the shape of the hair and comparing to the size of the hair and seeing that all oh, this, the width right here is not as big as the width right here. So I'm making sure that uh, still translates into uh, my drawing. I'm also keeping uh, an eye on the angles, um, like this hairline. It's not just a straight angle straight across. It's going uh, up and to the left a little bit. So I'm constantly looking back and forth from my reference photo to my drawing and comparing the angles of everything. In these beginning stages, it's good to draw in straight lines. It's, it's just easier to, one draw and easier just to help you block out everything so everything is in the right place and the right size. A good example here of seeing the shapes is as I'm drawing this, this eye socket here, kind of this whole area blocking it out, I'm not just looking at that, I'm also looking at the negative space. I'm looking at this space right here, I'm looking at this angle and trying to match my space and angle here to what's going on over here. Another good tip to do is to be comparing and seeing where certain things fall in relative to other uh, points on the portrait. Like I'm trying to figure out right now how far to bring out the mouth over here. And so I'll look, what I do is I'll look on my picture and I'll see, all right, the mouth is right there. If I go straight up, it falls right in the center of the eye. I know I don't have the eye drawn right now, but I can, you know, I'm guessing it's gonna be around right here, around the center of the eyes right there. So I can kind of bring it just straight down. And now I got a pretty good gauge of where it is gonna be. Now, will it shift later on? Maybe, but at least I got a pretty accurate, you know, ballpark of where it's gonna be. Another good example here, as you can see, is I'm looking at the corner of the mouth here. So I'm looking right here, and I'm noticing where the corner of the mouth is on the picture to uh, this uh, crease in the uh, cheek. This space right here, is a lot bigger on the picture than it is right here. So that means that I've, I've drawn this line incorrectly. So I'll need to kind of bring it out over here. See, now I'm just trying to match this gap to the gap over here. And that will help me draw this line incorrectly. So at this point, I'm actually kind of, um, I squint down at the picture and kind of blur everything to just see the general shapes. I'm actually gonna put a uh, quick picture up of what it looks like in this Photoshop filter. It's probably the closest thing uh, I can show you to what I'm, I'm looking at here. And
And like before with the, the blocking in everything, I'm not worried about detail. I'm just working big to small here, so I'm not gonna get caught up in the detail just yet. Using a stump here just to blend. Let's get these mass values in first before we go in with the really darks and lights. All right, now I got the, I got the general shadow of the the head as a whole you know it's darker on this side than that side and then the eye sockets on the nose stuff like that i'm going to go in and um just get a little more detailed with it put me go a little a little darker in certain areas and as i go i'm, I'm also comparing values um, and values just how dark or light something is like i'm seeing you know the dark you know this dark right here under the eyebrows compared it to the dark over here um, it's still darker than the the darker over here, but it is a lot darker than say, you know This part on the forehead and just kind of always constantly bouncing from point to point to point Just comparing everything making sure, you know, I'm darkening this so it is it's dark um, But still not as dark as say this area over in here All right now I want to get in and do some uh, pretty dark dark so I've switched over to a softer pencil it's actually a charcoal pencil here but I'm um, just going to whatever dark or softer pencil you have will do Now I'm going in with a white charcoal pencil to just the brightest highlights um, within the face just to push these highlights a little more. I'm able to do this because I'm on this gray tone paper, which I do recommend because starting with a gray tone allows you to gauge values a lot easier because you're starting in the middle of the, the value scale. If you start on plain white, everything that you put on it is gonna look really dark. But when you start with this gray, it's just gonna be a lot easier to gauge things. And also it's cool because you gotta get to go back in with this white and have some fun. All right, there you go. Uh, now you can actually go a lot more detailed with this if you like. Um, you can really push the darks and the lights and the values and really get in there and smooth things out. Uh, really, really, really dial in those values. Or you can do the opposite. Uh, I think it's really cool. A lot of times, a lot of artists have styles where it's a lot more unfinished than this and you can, they keep a lot of their uh, initial block in lines and it's really messy and uh, it's almost like the face is emerging out of like all this chaos, which I think looks really cool, um, which I would like to push more with my work. Um, or you can do the opposite and get really, really fine, detailed, and nice, polished, and smooth. Uh, it's all up to you. All right, so that's how I go about drawing a portrait. Uh, there are many different ways of drawing a portrait. This is just one way. And this is just an overview of the process. I tried to just highlight the key aspects that I find people struggle with. Um, if you didn't find it very helpful, or you felt that there was aspects where you got completely lost, please leave those comments in the comment section. I will use those to address those problems the best I can in a later video. Uh, if you did find this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at Forza43 and on Facebook at Paint Coach. I'm Christopher Nantero here telling you to go get painting or drawing.